questions for either Coach Gard or Coach Alvarez? Jeff? For, <clears throat> for Greg, over to your left. You've been with Bo a long time. Bo has given you so much responsibility. Can you articulate why you think you're ready for the job and, and what the challenge will be with a team that's certainly different than what you guys have had the last couple of years? Well, I think you always prepare yourself and you trust your preparation as you go through your career. And you never know when opportunity is going to knock, but you have to be ready for it. And I've been well prepared from a standpoint of strategic, uh, strategic philosophy, the foundations that uh, I believe in and what's important to me and what makes up high quality basketball. And you have to be able to communicate. You have to be able to relay your message. You have to be a good teacher. And that's what I've always prided myself and why I really got into this profession. I got in it through the teaching facet and coaching in junior high and then in high school. Um, and then the opportunity with Boa Rose. So uh, there's been steps along the way. This hasn't facilitated or happened overnight. Um, so from that standpoint, we have to do our job in terms of helping these young men have the best possible experience here that can be had. And we've, like I said before, we've got a long ways to go. This, you know, we've got to continue to grow. We took some steps forward tonight. There's other areas we've got to polish up. The closeness of finals was evident in, um, in terms of their uh, on academic max out right now. And uh, we've, had some, we've had some stinkers around this time of year. Fortunately, we were able to withstand, uh, you know, and hold off a, a team that's pretty good. Uh, you know what the RPI is because that's been out there um, and what they've done and how they played Texas and how they played uh, the other opponent, Texas A&M. So um, from that standpoint, that's the most focused. The most important thing right now is those 17 guys in that locker room and how we're going to take that next step and how we'll learn from tonight and we'll continue to – we'll get ready for final starting on Thursday. And, uh, and then as we go through the week and the weekend, we'll prepare for what's coming next week. Okay. Just to make sure I'm clear, tonight was Coach Ryan's last game, and he, Greg is now interim coach going forward. And can you tell us, Barry, when did Coach Ryan first approach you about doing it now? And did you, were you surprised you want to do it at this point in, this, in the year? Um, yeah, you're, you're correct. Uh, this is Bo's last game. Greg will take the team from now on. Um, Bo's been pointing towards uh, the semester. Um, we, we talked earlier this week about this is the last game prior to semester, so it wasn't a surprise to me. Uh, this has been an ongoing, uh, an ongoing situation, and with Bo, Bo gave you the chronology of it earlier, and it's that's the way it went down. Jim, Greg, what um, what are you going to do about filling out your staff? That'll be discussed yet tomorrow. We'll have I have various meetings already set up with um, office staff, coaching staff, the team again. So we'll continue to move that with that through uh, later tonight and into tomorrow, and discuss what options are available. If it was an NC two A game, I'd volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> Back. Would we run the ball a lot, Coach? Yes, we would. All right. Good. Greg, could you share with us what it was like in the locker room when straight back when he told the players? It was emotional. Um, it was obviously it's hard for coach and it's hard for the players because it's a, a leader that they've looked up to and obviously some for longer than others and based on the longevity that they've been here. Um, but at the same time, I thought Coach Ryan delivered a great message that I, I'm not leaving you after six months. I got an extra six months with, with you and and let's take this and step forward. You know, he'll always be a part of this program, forever entrenched in the history of this program. So he's not going to vanish off planet Earth. And I'll still make sure I have his phone number. Um, and, and I thought, you know, Coach Alvarez's viewpoint and message was very timely as well. To embrace this, to accept it, to grow, to use that as a challenge to get better, and, and that's what we need to do. We, we need to get better regardless. You know, we need to continue to, to take steps forward every day. So it, it was hard, it, as you would expect it to be. I mean, these, this program 
with the people is very invested. The people of this program from top with Coach Ryan all the way to I think we have more managers than players sometimes. Everybody is important, and everybody is really invested, and that's what make this pl makes this place special. The buildings are terrific. The facilities are phenomenal. A great uh, academic institution, uh, world class in all facets. But the people here are what put it over the top, you know. And and I've always known that. It really came into focus for me when I got here. You know, being in the state and growing up, you always look from afar. But once I really got in here and under have watched the last 15 years, and what it really hit with me is when I went through the last seven months with my dad and the people from this institution, Badger fans across the country, people that I had no clue who they were but were alumni, former players, current players that reached out, um, whether just for offer support, medical advice, um, help us through the, the grieving process when he passed away. Um, that put an exclamation point on something I already knew but it put a huge exclamation, exclamation point on how special the people are that wear that W. So, yeah. Co coach Alvarez, for Greg, is this a tryout for the second semester? Are you going to do a national search for a coach? In the how do you evaluate what he's done and pick the leader of the program going forward yeah, on a permanent that, basis? That's part of my job. And um, Greg is, an, is the interim coach. How we evaluate, uh, how he works with the team, how they improve, and where they are, and then make a decision at the end of the year where, what we want to do as we move forward. And then, Greg, can I ask, are you prepared for that kind of pressure for the next four or five months of knowing you're coaching for your job every day? I've never had more than a one-year contract in my entire career. So for me, it, it's never been about the pressure that way. Uh, our job is still to put these young men in the best position to have success here as student athletes, uh, hopefully as athletes on the court. Um, and if you do things the right way and surround yourself with good people and are sound in your fundamentals and are firm in your principles, Obviously, you've got to be flexible in your approach. But I've been asked that before when Coach Ryan first announced that, uh, you know, he would contemplate stepping down after a year. Coach Alvarez said there would be a national search. And my response has always been, absolutely, there should be. That's his job. And I've never flinched or blinked from that. Um, his responsibility is to put the best person in place to lead this program going forward. And I, that's, I've never had an issue with that. Coach Alvarez said exactly what he needed to say and what he should say as a leader of this athletic department. Um, that, that's his responsibility and that's the best thing going forward that he needs to handle that along with his team in the best way that he sees fit. In the intermediate time, our job as a staff is to help these young men through their finals, what's coming up over the next week, and then as we get prepared for Green Bay coming the next week and, and then into the Big Ten play. And that's what we need to focus one day at a time, getting better as we take steps forward.